All right, now let's look at a concrete example of subsets, right? Um, kind of an interesting example I've got here, uh, set B is the set X, or set containing X is such that X is a book of the Bible. So we've got all the books of the Bible here, okay? For those of you familiar with the Bible, this might um, come a little bit easier, but otherwise I can explain this as we go. It's an interesting um, collection, right? The Bible is a collection of books written by, um, you know, people throughout history and um, categorized in different ways. Um, o is going to be the set of books of the Old Testament. Old Testament is before uh, Jesus' birth, all the books written before then. And N is a set of all books of the New Testament, anything written after uh, Jesus' birth. Uh, G I'm going to have as the set of all books that are Gospels. Gospels are the four books that were written um, as historical accounts of Jesus' life specifically. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, were the authors of those four books. And E is going to be any book that is what we consider an epistle. Epistles were uh, letters that were written by um, you know, one of the apostles in uh written to instruct other people. So um, letters written by Paul or John or Peter or James um, or Jude or uh, some other people. Um, actually, that might be all of them. Uh, and they were written to instruct uh, other people. So these are letters. Uh, and then uh, J is going to be the set of all books written by John. John was one of Jesus' 12 disciples. Uh, he wrote the Gospel of John, but he also wrote three of the epistles, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and then he also wrote uh, the book of Revelation, which is a prophetic book uh, at the end of the New Testament. So, uh, so these are the sets here. And now we're going to look at subsets, uh, I'm trying to figure out which of these are subsets of others. Okay? Uh, the book of the Bible, books of the Bible, this is really the all-encompassing set. This contains everything else. Okay, and so just kind of by definition, every one of these other sets is a subset of B. B is kind of like the universal set that we're discussing here. All right, so I would say that O, in fact, maybe I'll put this up to the side here. O is a subset of B, uh, N is a subset of B, right? The Old and New Testaments kind of split uh, the Bible into two big chunks. Uh, the Gospels, G, that's a subset of B. Uh, the Epistles, those are a subset of B. And the books written by John, those are a subset of B. So all of these are a subset of B. <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at the remaining um, sets here. Uh, oh, also B is a subset of B, right? Every set is a subset of itself. So we could do that. We could also say the empty set is a subset of B, right? And we haven't listed all the subsets of B. There's others out there, lots of them. Um, but that's just a, a small collection of them. Okay, also, Old Testament. Books of the Old Testament. Well, I don't have any other sets of books of the Old Testament. Uh, there are no books in the New Testament that are in the Old Testament. There's no Gospels in the Old Testament. There's no Epistles in the Old Testament. There's no books written by John in the Old Testament. So nothing... None of these is a subset of the Old Testament that I have written here. Obviously, the Old Testament has subsets, um, but none of these four are going to be subsets of the Old Testament. So we would say, um, you know, N is not a subset of O, and G is not a subset of O, and so on, right? There's others. Okay. So now let's look at the New Testament. Now, the Gospels, the Epistles, and the books written by John are all in the New Testament. Okay. Um, in fact, yeah, all four of the Gospels, uh, they're the first four books of the New Testament. So, and there are no Gospels that are not in the New Testament. Okay. Which means that G is definitely a subset of N. Every gospel is in the New Testament, and there are no gospels that are not in the New Testament. Um, 
the epistles. Again, every epistle is in the New Testament. There are no epistles not in the New Testament. So we would say that E is a subset of N. Now J is kind of interesting. Oh, also, there's no overlap between E and G. Okay, so there are no Gospels that are epistles, and there are no epistles that are considered Gospels. Um, and so there, so we can't have a subset going that way. Um, now let's look at J. All of the books written by John are definitely in the New Testament. So J is a subset of N. But now let's look at J as pertains to G and E. John did write a Gospel, the book of John. But the other four books that he wrote are not Gospels, okay? So J is not a subset of G. Okay. Uh, John did write three epistles, but his other two books, the Gospel of John and Revelation, are not epistles. And so J is not, since there are some books in J that are not in E, J is not a subset of E, right? Okay. Um, we can also say that of the four Gospels, we go subsets the other way, of the four Gospels, one of them is written by John, but there exist three Gospels that are not written by John. So we would say that G is not a subset of J. And similarly, three of the epistles are written by John, but there are lots of epistles not written by John. All right, so E is also not a subset of J. Okay? Okay, I'm trying to think of any other combination that might be interesting here. Um, I think that's good. Now, we'll come back to some of these um, examples. Maybe we'll reuse some of these later in the course. Um, but, uh, oh, one other thing I want to mention, <clears throat> not just mention, but really get into, is let's look at all of the possible subsets of a set. Okay, so maybe I'll take one of these smaller ones, uh, the, the Gospels, for instance. Um, and we'll just look at that one. We don't want to do this for anything too big because there's a lot of them. So let's look at the uh, set G. <clears throat> there are four Gospels, so the cardinality of G, or the cardinal number, is four. That means there are four books in there, four elements. Um, G is equivalent to the set containing uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now the books in the Gospels are named after their authors, um, and so these are the four authors, therefore the four names of the books. Um, now let's take a look at all of the possible subsets of the Gospels, right? So any set, every set, has the empty set as a subset, right? So the empty set is a subset of G, we also know that every set is its own subset, or every set is a subset of itself. And so we can say that G is a subset of G. While we're at it, maybe instead of writing the subset notation every time, maybe I'll just make a, a list of all the subsets. All right, so maybe starting over here on the right, um, we have the empty set and G. Okay, so there's a couple subsets. Now what's interesting is that these two sets, and it doesn't matter what the set is, I could have the set of Gospels here, I could have the set of States of the United States, I could have anything, um, the set of real numbers. For every set, no matter what it is, no matter how big or small, finite or infinite, the empty set is always a subset, and it is always a subset of itself. In which case we can always say that there are two subsets at least of every set, with one exception, and that's the empty set itself. The empty set, the only set that is a subset of the empty set is itself, right? It satisfies both of those conditions, and so it really is the only subset of itself, um, or 
I should say the empty set is the only subset of the empty set. And so um, there's only one of them. But in any other case, any other set in existence, you have at least two subsets, the empty set in itself. But there are many others uh, for most of them, right? Um, and so uh, for this example, this, uh, the Gospels have four elements. Well, every element could have its own set, and that would then be a subset, right? So I could take the set containing Matthew. I could take the set containing Mark. I could take the set containing Luke. And I could take the set containing John. And a little bit short on space right there. Okay. So I could, so each of these four sets, set with a single element, is a subset of the larger set of gospels. Okay. Uh, I could also take combinations of two elements, right? So I've got zero elements. I've got one element. If I did combinations of two elements, we could have, we might need to start this to the left a little more. We could take Matthew with Mark. We could take Matthew with Luke. And we could take Matthew with John, right, that would give us three more subsets. We could also take Mark with, well, we already did Mark with Matthew, so we don't have to do that. Mark and Mark with itself doesn't make sense. But we can do Mark with Luke and Mark with John. And remember, the order doesn't matter, right? If I switch the order and I did Matthew with Mark and then Mark with Matthew, uh, it's the same set. So the order doesn't matter. Um, and then we could also do Luke with John. That would be the other combination of two. So we've done all the sets with one element, all the subsets with two elements. Now we've got to look at subsets with three elements. Um, well, maybe I'll just erase this up here. Um, I am going to keep the cardinal number. Okay, so sets with three elements. Well, we have the set with Matthew, Mark, Luke. Basically, to figure out the, the ones with three elements to make sure we get them all, you could just um, take one of them out at a time. So if I took the book of John out, I get Matthew, Mark, Luke. If I take the book of Luke out, I get Matthew, Mark, John. If I take Mark out, I get Matthew, Luke, John. If I take Matthew out, I get Mark, Luke, John. Okay, so those are the four different sets of three. So we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew, Mark, John, we have Matthew, actually let's, I'm going to run out of room right there, let's take that down here, Matthew, Luke, John, and Mark Luke John. Okay, so it appears that that's everything, right? That's all subsets with no elements, all subsets with one element, all subsets with two elements, all subsets with three, and then we have the set itself, which is the only subset of four elements. Um, and so, the subsets can never exceed the size of the set itself, right? So in general, 
the, um, in fact, let me write this in a different color. In general, if A is a subset of B, then the cardinality of A is going to be less than or equal to the cardinality of B. So you can never have a subset whose, uh, whose cardinality exceeds the set because um, you can't have more elements in the original set. Otherwise, you'd have things that aren't in the original set and it's no longer a subset. Okay? Um, period. Um, so, but well, let's look at the number of subsets. That's kind of an interesting study. Uh, let's look at all of these that are up here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There are 16 subsets, okay? Um, so for a set of four, a set of size four, there are going to be 16 subsets. Alright, well 4 and 16 are related in a lot of different ways. Um, right, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 squared is 16. Um, but also 2 to the 4th is 16, so it's kind of hard to tell what's what here, um, how this is going to work out. But there's definitely, you know, 4 times 4 is 16. Um, so there's some relationship between 4 and 16, for sure. Um, let's take a look at, maybe there's a relationship for all sizes. Um, also notice this, that um, a set of size 4 is always going to have 16 subsets. And the reason for that is it doesn't matter. These are just placeholders in reality. You can have the numbers one, two, three, four here, and then the subsets are gonna be the empty set, the set with one, two, three, four, and then the set with one, set with two, set with three, set with four, and then the set with one, two, one, three, one, four, uh, two, three, two, four, three, four. You know, you could have all these combinations, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four, right? And that's all the possible subsets. And so it doesn't matter what these placeholders are, they represent something, but there's four of them, and so to break down those four into subsets, it's always going to be the same way to do that. Um, and so uh, in, in a similar way, we could look at the main set. So let, let's, uh, maybe I'll erase this. We'll keep an eye on, keep our thoughts on the sets of four having 16 subsets. All right, so, um, oh, how do I write that? Cardinality, and then number of subsets. So, anything with a cardinality, let's, let's do zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, cardinality of four, we just said there are 16 subsets, okay? We'll just get a table going and find a pattern here. Uh, we've already talked about the empty set, right? If it has cardinality zero, that's the empty set. And we said that the empty set is the only subset of itself, right? The only the only subset of the empty set is the empty set itself. And so it means there's one subset, cardinality zero. Let's look at cardinality one. Let's just take uh, the set containing one. It's kind of trivial. Um, how many subsets are there? Well, the empty set, right? So sub sets are going to be the empty set and itself. And since there are no other elements, there's no other ways to combine them, that's it. There's just two of them. Okay. Now let's look at a set containing two elements. Um, 
I like this one's a little bit different. Uh, heads and tails, like you're flipping a coin. Um, let's take the set containing H and T for heads and tails. All well, the number of subsets. Uh, let's go with uh, the empty set is one. Then we've got all sets um, with one element. So that would be the set containing H and the set containing T, head and tails. And then of course, all sets of, with two elements, which would be just the set itself, okay? So in this case, there are one, two, three, four um, subsets. So if your cardinality is two, again, it doesn't matter if it's heads and tails or evens and odds or um, up and down, it doesn't matter. Um, cardinality is four, I'm sorry, cardinality of two results in four subsets. Uh, let's look at three for a moment. Let's see. Do what has three things? Um, I don't know. Uh, I was just talking about books of the Bible. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's three things. I don't know. I'm just uh, coming up with things uh, as we go. Let's do Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There we go. Trinity, right? Three things? I don't know. Um, anyway, so what are my subsets? Um, we have the empty set, we have three sets containing one element, so it would be F, S, H, okay? Uh, we have sets containing two elements. We would have F and S, we would have F and H, we would have S and H. That's all the combinations, that, 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 yeah. And then we have all the sets of size three, um, which is just the set itself, F, S, H. Okay? And so when I look at these, count them up, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight of them. Okay. So as we keep going with this list, I can assume you kind of look at a pattern here, right? It seems to be doubling. Start at one, double to get two, double to get four, double to get eight, double to get 16. If you were to look at uh, cardinality with five elements, uh, or cardinality of five, you'll end up with 32 subsets, and it does grow exactly that way. It's a constant doubling process. Um, it's a cool pattern. It shows up no matter the size, or not no matter the size, no matter the elements, no matter what the elements are, like I said, it's the size of the set, the cardinality, that's important, okay? Uh, and that is what will determine the number of subsets. Uh, I had a little glitch there, surprise. Um, I erased a few things, but that's okay. Uh, basically, the idea here is that no matter what the cardinality, this pattern will continue of doubling. And so, no matter what you get down here, for your cardinality, say it's n, some general finite number, the number of subsets will be two to the n, okay? It's always gonna be um, another factor of two added on, right? So, or multiplied. So you start with one, multiply by two, multiply by two, multiply by two. Every time you multiply by two, you raise the power by one. That's why you have two to the n. Um, two to the fifth is 32, two to the fourth is 16, two to the third is eight, and so on. Um, now, another interesting aspect, if you think about proper subsets, every one of these sets that I had written up here um, has one proper sub, or I'm sorry, one non-proper subset, right? The set itself. Proper subsets are all subsets that are not itself. And so, um, you know, these three, for, for the head tail example, three proper subsets and one equal subset, right? Um, and so if you're looking for proper subsets, it's always gonna be one less than this number. 
Um, so if I were to continue my table, number of proper subsets, um, you'd have zero, no, wait a minute. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, there are no proper subsets of the empty set, right? Because the empty set is its own subset. There are no other sets other than that. So yeah, there's no proper subsets for the empty set. There's one proper subset here. There's going to be three, then seven, then 15, then 31. And all the way down, no matter what your cardinality is, the number of proper subsets will be 2 to the n minus 1. Okay. So this number minus the 1 equivalent set. Okay, so um, just a, a cool relationship there. Now we get into um, infinite sets. If you recall, we did deal with infinite sets and their cardinality. Remember, uh, the size of the natural numbers we said was aleph naught, okay, or aleph null, whatever, um, however you want to say that. And it was this symbol here, right, aleph naught. Uh, what's interesting is that the cardinality, and we call this aleph naught, it's infinite, right? It's an infinite size. Uh, it's the size of the natural numbers, size of the even numbers, size of the odd numbers are all the same. What's interesting is if you take all the subsets of L of naught, you get something, it's a little fuzzy, I'm going to make a wavy line here, a little fuzzy. You could think of it kind of like 2 to the L of naught power, sort of, which it isn't technically. Um, well, it is kind of, um, but what we call it is Aleph 1, okay? So that's Aleph 1, and in fact, if you took the set of all the subsets, it's kind of interesting, so, you, so if you think of all the subsets as making up their own set, then you could have a set with cardinality aleph 1 and then its number of subsets is even bigger it's an actually bigger infinity okay and so now we can start to compare sizes of infinity which is mind-blowing right um, there's an entire study of mathematics revolving around these study these um sizes of infinity. Um, and in fact, you end up with uh, what we call Aleph 2, which is bigger than Aleph 1, which is bigger than Aleph 0. Okay? Um, and so forth. And if you want to really blow your mind, there's things bigger than Alephs that are out there. Uh, once you extend, or once you expand it out to all of the Aleph subscripts, you know, you can run that off to infinity and change to something even bigger, which is crazy. Um, so anyway, uh, some weird but really cool things. Um, obviously, when you get into proper subsets, it kind of, you know, the subtracting of one doesn't really factor in anymore because what's infinity minus one? It's still infinity, right? If you have an infinite number of things, like if you have all the natural numbers and you pull the number one out, you still have an infinite number of numbers. Um, so it doesn't really change anything. Um, so you kind of don't really uh, worry about the difference uh, between the subsets and the proper subsets. So anyway, some cool stuff there. Um, you'll see a little bit of this in the homework, um, but it, it's more, um, entertainment and interesting stuff than uh, anything else. But it is pretty cool. It does exist out there. I uh, thought you guys might see that as interesting. Uh, but in different size infinities, infinities that are bigger than other infinities um, is very interesting. The real numbers, for instance, there's more real numbers than there are natural numbers. Um, so the real numbers have a card.
cardinality that's larger than Aleph Naught, okay, even though Aleph Naught is infinite. Um, however, the natural numbers, the odd numbers, the even numbers, they all have the same cardinality, which is Aleph Naught. Uh, real numbers are bigger. It's a bigger set um, by an infinite scale even. So interesting stuff. Um, now I'm rambling. Anyway, uh, that's cool. I think, uh, I think that gives you enough information to get through uh, most of the subset uh, section.